So how are we going to get to 500 and L? Well, we're going to win 50 buy-ins at 200, take a 10 buy-in shot, then win 50 buy-ins at 500, and then hopefully move on to 1K and L. Okay, so this first hand we have 9 out of clubs. We flat the 3 bet in position, pretty standard. Um, flop, pretty much the dream. Gut shot plus flush draw. Um, pretty good flop for villain's range, so we will just flat, no rate, point in raising. Turn the three of the clubs. Obviously really good. We have a flush now, um, and just going to call call. If it runs out four card flush, pretty unfortunate, but um, I think raising here would be like... I mean, I think it'd be alright exploitatively, but I don't know. I think in general, just flatting here does better. So we do flat. It is a small size... I guess maybe there is an argument for raising there, but I decide to flat. Uh, I'm not really worried about the four cut flush. Obviously, snap the river, and we induce the bluff by taking our line. Next time we have 9 8 again, except the offsuit combo blind versus blind. Uh, this is pretty close. I mean, the, the flop size is pretty big, so. But I think if I am going to bluff on turns, it's fine. Obviously, turn the best turn. We decide to raise here. Um, there's lots of hands that have equity against us. The spade, spade plus straight draw. I don't think they're going to fold anyway. And villain makes a massive mistake with his hand and just snap jams. And we stack 5 7 of spades. Next hand, we have ace 10. Uh, we open and player 2 decides to lead. I really don't like the lead from player 2. Our range is a lot stronger. Yes, you can own my soul with 3s and 4s, but. I'm going to happily raise this. Your range is pretty capped. You're not going to have the overpairs a lot of the time. I raise it and play two jams here. Like, okay, if they have jack 10, they have jack 10. I'm going to call it off. But they don't. They have queen 10. But they river their club. So it's unfortunate there. Next hand, we raise the squeeze. Uh, sorry, the limp. And I mean, we probably should bet the slop. I don't know why I check. I guess I think I have showdown value. And. I have a club in my hand, so tripling here with a club in my hand would kind of suck. Turn is interesting. I don't... I mean, it's close. We don't... Like, the heart outs are not clean. However, we run good and we just hit the non-suited king. Obviously, got the nuts. Going to check jam here pretty comfortably. Villain's going to have a lot of two-pair here. And potentially some straights. So, pretty happy to just rip it here. And get, expect to get caught off a lot. And we actually call a queen nine. So pretty unfortunate for the villain. Next hand we have nines facing a three bet. Seven, nine, seven. Pretty good flop for our hand, obviously. Have the boat. Um, villain bets on flop. Kind of small is what it is. Probably just flat here with most of range. Maybe raise with some seven X, some hearts. But it is zone, so I don't really need to worry about balancing here. Turn is an ace, good card for villains range. If they were betting the flop with ace-king, ace-queen, they just turned an ace. Great for me, they bet on the turn, I'm pretty happy. And River, I actually think player three should probably check and allow my hearts to bluff. However, player three just rips it here, which, I mean, is also not bad, but we have a boat and we stuck the bluff. So next time we have jack-eight of clubs in the big blind, getting priced in here. I was thinking about folding, but I think it would be a mistake. Yes, under the gun is short stack, but I think it's fine. It's really close. Play 4 just jams. This is a weird spot. Like, I mean, I don't think play 4 ever jams a set. Uh, it'll be 2 pair or flush draw. So against that range, I'm 50% equity, so pretty happy to call. Over here, we have jacks. Uh, we squeeze. Probably the best spot to pick up jacks. We have a squeeze spot and just going to go broke against under the gun's 4 betting range here. Uh, for, under the gun does just flat, which is interesting. And player 5 flats, which is also interesting. Uh, pretty good flop for jacks. I just bet here and I'm just going to go broke. Uh, player 2 just jams pretty quickly. I'm not folding. Yes, if they have queens, I lose. I think kings and aces will be 4 betting, so it's only really sets and uh, queens that I'm worried about. But of course, they'll show us some stupid hands like 5s, and we stack that. That is kings. We have a three bet versus a MP open, and we get flooded. Uh, flop is ace jack four. I decided to check this. I mean, th 
Betting one third is fine. Uh, we turn a set. Pretty happy about that, obviously. Now, just going to try to get max value from ace, queen, ace, jack, jacks. And obviously going to get stacked by some component of queen, 10 suited. We play three bets here. They're going to be pretty strong. Um, now, the river's interesting. They bet the river after they bet the turn. So they're just saying they have only queen, 10, and maybe like 10, 9 of diamonds. So there's only five combos. Oh, sorry, three, four combos. So pretty easy to call off. And they show us... So 10-7 of clubs here, once again priced in, we flop 10-7 top 2, pretty happy about this, uh, wet board so I will decide to raise, particularly when SB flats, uh, we do raise it, and probably just going to stack off here against like 3s or whatever, we turn the boat which is great, I decide to bet small here, um, I think villains range is going to have a lot of flushes so, and if they have 10x they're going to jam themselves. Anyway, we obviously snap with the boat and we stack the flush. Right, this next hand I finally got my recording to work on the reg tables. Uh, we have a three bet spot with queens. I decide to bet the flop, obviously. Um, sample size on villain is not that great, so I'm not really going to take these stats into consideration. We get raised, uh, you know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. You're really representing like ace three. Um, so I'm pretty happy to just let villain blast off here. Pretty good river. I think villain will just check back even if they have like sevens, eights, sixes. So I think I would like to take the initiative on the river and just value jam. And we do get called off by a lower pair. <laughs> Okay, so we have a king 10 of diamonds here. I'm not going to say whether this is a win or a lose hand, make it a little bit more exciting. Uh, we get flooded. Uh, I mean, sorry, we flat in position, and so does button, and so does small blind. I mean, the 4x open is what it is. I mean, I don't think it's not. I mean, it's probably indicative of a weaker player. I think most of the regs are using $5 opens. I use 6, but the range is a little bit tied up. Anyway, we. Decide to bet the flop. Uh, there's a few reasons for betting this flop. I think we can definitely deny a lot of equity versus hands, such as ace high, sixes, fives, fours, deuces, threes, sevens, if they're in range. Um, so I don't mind betting here and just kind of denying a lot of the residual equity that the rest of um, the our uh, the rest of the opponents have. And if we get raised here, it's not super bad. Like, we have the second up flush draw. A lot of the raising hands will be 7 6 of diamonds, 6 5 of diamonds, jack 10 of diamonds. Or we block jack 10 of diamonds, queen jack of diamonds. So, like, combo draw. So, you know, we we are ahead of those. Obviously, the nut flush draw, we're kind of screwed against. And yes, there are two combos of 9 8 suited. And there's a lot of 8x in range. We do, we are in the cutoff though, so we are perceived to have a lot of 8x. I think cutoff, button, and SB are more likely to have 8x. I think under the gun probably just has more over pairs and um, Broadway cards. So I don't mind betting here. Anyway, we try and fold out the residual equity. Get flooded in position. The turn is kind of where I'm not sure what to do. I think there's merit to betting and checking. I definitely think if we got called, particularly the button who's going to call with 7s and 6s, we can definitely fold those out on turn. Um, and we can also try and maybe, um, you know, realize, I mean, the problem by betting here is like, if we bet and we get raised, we lose a lot of, like, we get denied so much equity, but, um, particularly as we pick up the gut shot. So I decided to check here and when villain bets, I mean, I think it's pretty strong at this point when they bet the turn, there's no point in raising. So I'm just going to flat and take a river card. And on the river, it's a nine, I think. So I decided to jam this river, which is interesting. I definitely think I have more nine X. I don't think button should be betting nine X on turn unless they have obviously nine, eight suited and maybe queen nine. So I like jamming here. I mean, at the time I didn't really like it, but the more I think about it, I kind of like, I block Jack 10. 
Um, I mean, we have more nine x because we check, we bet the flop, check the turn. I mean, we could have some backdoor spades as well, but you know, like it's we're representing nine x more than um, anything else. I mean, it's, the problem is here we're representing such a narrow range that we're probably going to get picked off a lot. Um, a hand also kind of looks like I can underpair. I got counterfeited as well. So I don't know how often this is going to work, but in theory, I do think I have a lot of 9x, so I don't think it's that bad. Probably a little bit unbalanced here, um, but here's what it is. Like, we can fold out like a nut flush draw. So there are certain hands that we can fold out. Um, anyway, we get called by quads, and it's a pretty uh, annoying spot. Okay, so the next hand we're looking at is 7 6 of spades. We decide to flat here. I mean, we do. I do prefer 3-betting here for this main reason that people don't come in from behind. Um, I do like to bluff, so bluffing one person is a lot easier than bluffing two or three people. Anyway, we decide to flat and ace-8-6. Now, obviously, under the gun, is going to have a lot of ace-x betting here. Um, but I do have a pretty good hand to block a lot of the good value hands, like sets of sixes. A6 suited, which I don't think under the gun necessarily has a lot of. They're probably going to have like ace king, ace queen, ace jack. And so I decide to get a little bit out of line here. I don't do this always, but you know, once in a while it's okay to be a little bit punty. Um, so bringing back the punt of the day here with the seven six of spades. I don't expect dealer to, uh, button to call, uh, continue here a lot once I do raise. It's very strong raising into three, uh, two. And we, like I said, we have backdoor straight, backdoor flush, and block bottom set. Now, I don't expect I don't expect uh, under the gun to fold on the flop. I'm trying to set up for a turn fold. Um, so yeah, this is no surprise here. I get called like the hand is very face up. Um, and if we run into set of eights, we run to set of eights. It's just not that many combos of. Um. <clears throat> anyway, turn is the five of spades. Now this is where I make a massive mistake. Um, this is why I really wanted to review it. Um, if we are going to raise the flop as a bluff and we turn the not best turn card, we definitely have to continue on it. Like this makes no sense. And what do I do? I decide to check. Now at the time I kind of leveled myself into thinking, oh, like people just don't fold. Like they're just going to hero off here with three streets with ace king. But if that's the case, why raise the flop? Like that's counterintuitive. Like to raise the flop and then not bluff the turn because... You didn't think they were going to fold ace king or ace queen is like really bad. So like obviously reviewing this, I'm pretty disappointed that I don't bet on the turn. I mean, how bad is it? I don't think it's like really, really bad, but I think it's just like bad. Anyway, obviously bad play gets rewarded. And we river our flush on the river. Fill and check. So at this point, range is pretty capped. Um, either going to have missed flushes or uh, a decent ace x. Um, so against this range we want to polar it uh, if we bet 30 we're going to fold the flushes anyway and ace high is going to call if we jam we have missed flush draw well perceived to have missed flush draw I mean if I did have a missed flush here I'd probably bet jam here and so it puts ace x in a really tough spot honestly I think on this run out you probably have to just call it off particularly when I check the turn so yeah under the gun I mean, it makes a pretty standard call, particularly with the Queen of Hearts in their hand, and we misplay, but get rewarded. 